Hey everyone, Derek Prawl with safehome.org again. Today we're gonna to be looking at a great VPN that's user-friendly enough for beginners, but powerful enough for veterans. And regardless of where you fall on that spectrum, they're definitely gonna hide your ass. So yeah, Hide My Ass VPN or uh, HMA, if there are any little kids listening, actually started in 2005 when a 16 year old student from the UK wanted to bypass his school's network restrictions on video games. And that's just about as good of any origin story we've ever heard for a VPN. Since then, they've grown to be one of the largest on the planet. And we're not just talking about user base here. They operate nearly 1,100 servers in over 200 countries. But before we get into HMA specifics, we're going to take a quick look at their pros and cons. So first for the pros category. Like we said, their footprint is huge, and many of their servers are optimized for streaming and P2P file sharing. They're also extremely user-friendly. Their UI feels more like a video game than a VPN. You're going to see what I mean in just a minute. They also take their privacy really seriously. And even though they're based in the UK, which is a bit of a concern for some privacy hawks, they've recently become a no-log service, which is great news. They also offer some important and interesting functionality, like a kill switch and IP randomization. We're also going to get into that in just a minute. But first, we got to talk about the cons. They're a little lacking when it comes to bonus features and add-ons. A lot of the VPNs that we've seen bundle things like cloud storage or ad blockers in with their services, but with HMA, it's kind of what you see is what you get. There's also no travel-specific functionality. Other VPNs we've seen have the ability to mask VPN protocol traffic in regions with restrictive or oppressive internet censorship. So if you're traveling to places like Russia, China, or Saudi Arabia regularly, HMA might not be the best choice for you. Finally, their user friendliness is a bit of a double-edged sword. There's very limited ability to tinker around with the inner workings of this VPN to optimize it for your specific use. This isn't really a big deal to the novice user, but we could see an expert being a little frustrated by their lack of customizability. All right, so now that we have a general feel for HMA, let's take a look at how the VPN functions on a day-to-day -day basis. So here's how HMA looks when you first open it up. As you can see, it's pretty simple. We have a big on off switch and I bet you can figure out what that's for. <laughs> and here we see our unmasked IP address and our connection type. Right now it's set for lightning connect, which in theory will connect you to the fastest server based on your location. When you switch it on, we're gonna see our new IP address show up and the location we're routing our traffic through. This is in pretty close proximity to where we live, so that makes sense. You're also going to see their mascot Jack here put on a little disguise each time, so that's pretty fun. All right, so if you click down here, you're going to pull up your list of server options. At the top here, you can search for a specific location, or you can scroll through all of them by continent and country. Like we said before, HMA has a huge number of servers, so this list is pretty long. We also wanted to bring your attention to this though. Down here at the bottom, you're going to find servers that are optimized for streaming and P2P file sharing. This takes a lot of the guesswork and legwork out of things if either of these functions are what you're primarily using HMA for. So honestly, that's about all you're gonna need to deal with in the day-to-day -day use of HMA. Like we said, it's super simple and super easy to use. We obviously don't wanna end things here though. So let's take a look at some of the bells and whistles. So the first thing we wanted to show you here is the speed test. This is a pretty cool function that's gonna make sure you're running as quickly as possible. If you click on the server menu and scroll all the way down, you're gonna find it there. They're gonna ask you to disconnect, so let's go ahead and do that. And here you can compare a bunch of different servers all at once. By default, they're gonna select the five nearest to you, as well as some optimized options for P2P file sharing and streaming. Let's kill some of these, and just for fun, let's add one in that's super far away. How about Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam? <laughs> All right, so it's time to run our test. The fastest one is the closest to us, but hey, Vietnam didn't do so bad either. One potential reason for this is that HMA uses virtual servers, 
meaning that although the IP address is registered in Vietnam, the actual physical server might be located somewhere else. This could honestly be included in the cons category, depending on what exactly you're going to be using this VPN for. That said, when we were using the VPN in our day-to-day -day lives, we never really noticed any lags in performance. So that speed test can come in handy if you're noticing some significant slowdowns or if you want to put specific servers to the test up against each other. That's some pretty useful functionality, but let's look at some more features. If you click up here on the little gear, you'll see your preferences window. In general, you can toggle your notifications on and off and set your startup settings. Pretty basic stuff. Under privacy though, we get to two pretty important features. You've got your kill switch and IP shuffle. The kill switch is important because if your VPN service is ever interrupted for whatever reason, your actual IP address will be exposed if you're still connected to the internet. The kill switch terminates your internet connection if your VPN ever goes down. You've also got IP shuffle. This will switch your IP address on a regular basis to make tracking your location a whole lot harder. You can decide how frequently you want this to happen, but just make sure that your kill switch is on if you have this function engaged, or else your real IP address can leak during the transition. Now, when we were doing research on HMA, we found some folks saying that their real IP address was leaking while they were shuffling despite having the kill switch on. We weren't able to replicate those results in our tests, but it's something to keep in mind. Depending on what you're using this VPN for, it might be a pretty big problem, or it might be a slight risk that you're willing to take. All right, so one last thing before we wrap up, we wanted to talk about HMA's mobile experience. Apologies for my smashed up phone. As you can see, this is pretty much an exact copy of the desktop experience, right down to our disguised donkey. <laughs> we have the same access to all the servers, and we have the same uh, options for some streaming optimized servers. What we're missing is the P2P servers, but honestly, who's torrenting on their phone? So really, that's about that for HMA. Remember when we said that user-friendliness was a bit of a double-edged sword and that there weren't a whole lot of bonus features here? Well, this is what we meant by that. There's no changing protocols, there's no travel-centric functionality, and there's no real way to pull the levers and push the buttons and fiddle with the dials. Now, for some people, that's a tick in the pros column. Others, though, might want more access to the inner workings to customize the service a little bit more. Overall, though, we gotta say, we were pretty happy with HMA. It does have a few shortcomings here and there, but it's a great entry-level service for folks looking to shore up their online privacy. As always, if you want more VPN content like this, like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, reach out to me in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody.